Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Amen. They prayed. Do you remember what happened in the upper room? What were they doing? Praying. Amen. What were they doing? They knew that the power of God was coming. They weren't praying because God was absent of power. They weren't praying because God did not have power. They were praying because Jesus gave them a prophetic word that if you will go and meet me at this place, and they knew what to do. They began to pray in faith. And the Bible says, so when the time came, it was ready. Don't you know why we missing so much out on God? Because opportunity is coming and you're not ready. Opportunity is coming. And it just keep passing. Time and chance happened for us all. What happened? We're not ready. But the Bible said that these folks were in one place on one accord praying. And when the opportunity came, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, the Bible said there was a wind that came from heaven. The Bible said a mighty rushing wind and tongues of cloven fire set on each one of them. Why? Because they were praying. Because when we pray and when we cry unto the Lord, the Lord will move. Somebody thank God right now in Jesus' name. God is calling on us, church, to pray. If you're visiting with us, on January, I'm sorry, June the 3rd is a Friday night. Friday night before, <laughs> Friday night before June 5th, which was Pentecost. I told the church, I said, church, we're going to come together. We're going to pray in the spirit. We're going to have healing and deliverance service. That's what I thought. But God had something else in mind. God said, uh-uh, I need you to pray for this nation. I need you to get this church in alignment with me. Saints of God, y'all listen to me good. I never had a clue. I never had a, uh, 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 any kind of faith that Roe versus Wade would, uh, would be overturned. I didn't. I'm just telling you, I didn't. I'm not saying God couldn't do it, but God knows what he's doing. Amen. I'm just telling you now because wickedness seems so wicked. Are y'all hearing me? Amen. Folks in power doing so much wrong stuff. Amen. That, uh, that, that, do y'all understand? Now, I'm not saying we did it, but God made us a part of something historic. God had this church to come and pray, come to pray for those that are in authority. God had us as the church to come and pray and to repent of our sins and to repent of this church sins and to, re oh, come on, y'all about to thank the Lord. Don't look at me like you ain't never had a bad thought. Don't you look at me like you ain't never, but, but you, some of y'all upset with me now because I don't talk about your little Democrat party. You better hope Jesus don't come. Somebody, somebody said, somebody said, oh, uh, if Jesus come, why ain't come? He ain't come because he's trying to give you a chance to get right. But I hope he don't come. But I hope he don't. Amen. Praise the Lord. He's giving us a chance to get right. Are y'all hearing me say? God gave this church to be a part of something historic. And I'm telling you, I'd have never thought it. I know I heard them talk about it. I said, oh, that's just conversation. These folks ain't going to do that. Da, 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 da. And all that, all the hoopla, hoopla. And lo and behold, somebody thank the Lord. Glory to God. Y'all ought to give God thanks right now. What is God saying? I'm not done with America. America is mine. America is in my hand. And God bless America. If you will begin to pray in the name of Jesus, pray for the Supreme Court, pray for the president, pray for the congressman, pray for the Senate. I'm telling you now, the heart of the king is in the hand of the Lord, and he'll turn it as the water course, and God will turn what's wrong and make it right. You ought to give God. God thanks in here in the name of Jesus. But God needs somebody to pray. God needs somebody to pray. God needs somebody to pray. And I want you to listen to me good, saints of God. God's not looking for the church to be like Jonah. Huh? God's not looking for the church to be like Jonah. 
Nineveh was the capital of Assyria. And Nineveh uh, and Assyria should have got all the judgment God could pour out on them. They should have got it. But instead of pouring out judgment, God said, Jonah, I need you to go to Nineveh. I ain't. Is that what your Bible says? I ain't. And God and Miss Drusilla got to talking together. <laughs> and a Druism came out of it. Druism, she got it from she got it from Miss Anna Jane. Okay, I'll show you better than I can tell you. You going? <laughs> you going? Do y'all understand why some of y'all still in the belly that well? It's, it's not because it's not the devil's so bad. It ain't not because the devil's so big and bad. You just disobedient. God has placed his call on your life. There's no one here that God has not ordained for ministry. I'm not studying about no title. I'm not studying about none of that. You read the Bible, you don't put no title on none of them folks' names. You see the Apostle Paul in the Bible? No, you see Paul. Do you understand? Did you see them called Stephen a deacon? Do they call Deacon Stephen? I deek. Stephen. And we got so such a low self-esteem to here we folk we think the church is something and somebody put a title on your name. You let them put a title on your name based on what you're doing. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Now listen to this. So what happened? You know the story. That's how Jonah ended up in the belly of the well. He didn't end up in the belly of the well because he was an alcoholic. He didn't end up in the belly of the well because he was a whoremonger. He in the belly of the well because he won't do what God called him to do. And like Jonah in the belly of the well, you ought to come to your senses. And say, Lord, if you let me out of here, I'm going to do whatever you say do. Oh, come on. Y'all hear what I'm saying? You hear this? You hear this? You hear this? You hear this? That's why some of y'all not prospering. You're making money, but you're not prospering. You understand? And God honors his request. And it's something with a fish. You're in the belly of a fish, and the fish spit you out on dry land. He ain't have to swim. The fish, put the man on dry land. And what did Jonah do? Went to work. Three days and the judgment of God going to fall. The word got to the king. Say, say, what now? Three days, why? Because whenever God sends you somewhere, he's already gone before you to prepare you for, or to prepare the people for the message that you got for them. The message got to the king. And what did the king say? The king said, hold a minute. Hold a minute. For three days, ain't nobody eating. Cat, dog, horse, cow, ain't nobody eating or drinking. Why? Because there may be a chance that this God will repent. And what happened? God saw it, and what did he do? He repented. Somebody thank the Lord now. Thank the Lord now. Now, why don't God want us to be like Jonah? Because when God turned the thing around, not Jonah mad. I knew you were going to repent. I knew you weren't going to do it. I knew you were going to. See, say, this is not the time to pay back. This is the time to pay forward. This is the time to remember when God delivered you. This is the time to remember when you were living like hell. This is the time to remember that God reached way down and he picked you up. Somebody thank the Lord if you remember now. 